Hi, this is Jen Schaefer, and this is the second episode in my new series of planner videos. This week is my sister's birthday, so I wanted to do something fun and colorful. To start out, I'm taking the rounded rectangle stickers that come in the Erin Condren planner, and I'm going to write one of each header on each color. This won't cover every section of every day, but it'll give me something to start with. Once I've written out the first 15 headers, I start by putting the first Today sticker in the top left corner on Monday. For the to-do sticker that's the same color, I move down to the middle section on Tuesday, and for little things, I'll continue with the lowest section on Wednesday. For the next color, I'll place the sticker to the right of my previous sticker. This gives sort of a diagonal rainbow look. Once I finish with the headers I created originally, I can move on to filling in the remaining blank headers by following the pattern. Then, I can use my white gel pen to add text to these headers as well. Because this week is my sister's birthday, I wanted to be sure that her day stands out. So, I used a bright green birthday banner from the sticker sheets to note the day, then wrote in it so I would definitely remember whose birthday it was. Friday also happens to be when we hit 23 weeks in our pregnancy, so I wanted to be sure to add a banner sticker for that as well. I love how all the bright colors really stand out here. There are two more stickers that come with the planner that I wanted to take advantage of. The planner comes with doctor and dentist appointment banners, so I added them to the page since we have both of them happening this week. Once the stickers are placed, I filled in the times. Because my sister loves cats and I recently got a stamp set that reminds me of her, I chose to use the Lawn Fawn Meow You Doin' stamp set this week. For my step tracker in the little things section, I'm using the cute paw print that comes in the set. The small size makes it perfect for fitting in the planner. The stamp set also comes with an adorable open and closed heart. I use the open heart to add my to-do and today checklists. To finish off these sections, I use my sharpie marker to fill in all the events I have going on this week, as well as my to-dos and the steps I have so far. It's been a pretty uneventful week with some lunches and just a few chores before a fun weekend. This weekend, we're driving up to visit my husband's family. It's always a nice time getting to visit, and my son loves getting to see his grandparents, aunt, and uncles. To note this in my planner, I took several of the banners in the yellow color and filled in part of the Today section for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This helps our mini vacations stand out. My next task was to decide where I wanted to put the cats and their accessories. I decided to try something new this week and stamp directly in my planner. I did notice that a little of stamping from the step tracker in the previous week bled through with the page some, but that didn't really bother me, so I thought I'd try it out. If this bothers you, I know some planners come with thicker pages, or you can use some kind of sticker paper like I did with most of the images last week. It's also worth noting that you're going to want to go with a pigment ink rather than a dye ink when stamping in your planner. A pigment ink will sit on top of the paper with only a little bleeding, where dye inks are designed to soak into the paper and you'll likely notice more of an issue. With deciding where I wanted my stamps to go, I knew I wanted to leave some empty spaces in the weekend in case I wanted to add checkboxes to either today or to-do sections. I also really wanted to fit the cute little birthday cat food cake on my sister's birthday. Before I could stamp the cats in the cute little additions, I realized I had forgotten to include a few to-do items, so I quickly got my heart stamp and pen out again so I could add these in. I'm glad I caught that because I almost put a cat on Wednesday that would have taken up a lot of space. I also wanted to fill in my next week's section of the sidebar so that I would know how far up I could go with my design. We only have a few things going on next week, so I'll have plenty of place for adorable stamps. Once these sections were filled in, it's time to start decorating my page. I absolutely love this adorable kitten and imagine him playing with the yarn ball that comes with the set. I decided to have him sort of juggling a few of them to take up space, bring in plenty of color, plus I just think the idea is cute. I continued to stamp the cats using post-it notes as masking paper for areas outside the boxes that I didn't want to stamp in. I even added a few extra mice. When I finished this, I didn't like how much white space was showing on the bottom. So I took the same footprint stamp I was using for the step tracker and made a cute little cat walking path along the bottom of the page. I think this fills in the space nicely and goes with the cute, whimsical look I was going for. With all the stamping done, it's time to move on to coloring. I want to create four very distinct looking cats. So my first little playful one, my goal was to make it look like a Siamese cat. 
The general look for them is they have a brown face, ears, legs, and tail, and the rest of the body is lighter. The color tends to get dark towards the middle and kind of blends out lighter to almost white. So I'm starting with sienna brown, then we'll move on to dark brown and even a little black towards the very center of the nose, as well as the tips of the ears, feet, and tail. If you're working on something like this, or any picture you're not entirely sure how to color, I like to look at a sample picture on my phone. I'm not trying to copy a picture exactly, just get some kind of reference for the coloring. This tip also works great for more cartoonish creatures as well as flowers if you're looking for ideas on how to get your colors to work together. I really love the way the cat turned out. Though, I didn't notice until I was recording this voiceover that the nose should have been black, so I went in later and fixed that. I continued to add layers of color until I was happy with my saturation of color, as well as how the blending was turning out. I also added some extra black shading to right where the back legs peek out, give this area more shading, and make it look a little more 3D. Once I was happy with the coloring on the cat, I moved on to coloring the yarn balls. For this page, I decided the best accessory colors would be purple, yellow, and some kind of teal. However, the set of colored pencils I have doesn't come with teal. That's where the benefit of layering colors can come in. I started with a base layer of true blue, then used some grass green over the whole image, giving me a mix between the two colors. To finish off, I used blue violet to add some shading. For the yellow ball, I used canary yellow, then shaded it with orange. And for the purple ball, I used violet, then shaded it with blue violet. I feel like these three colors go really well with the header sticker colors. My next cat, I decided to go with an orange tabby. I started by putting down a layer of orange over the whole cat minus its belly and decided this was a little bright for what I wanted. So I used the sienna brown for shading as well as the thin layer over all the orange to tone back the color. To give the cat some stripes, I used dark brown. I also added a little shading with it in the spots where I wanted the darkest. This technique worked really well for the look I was going for. I colored the remaining cats, mice, and accessories in a very similar fashion. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you enjoyed my second planner episode. Be sure to check the description for further details, and I hope to see you again next time.